on Podcast Tips tonight, uh, we will unlock your on-camera charisma on the show in episode 21 of Podcast Tips with Rob Greenlee. And thank you so much for being here with me tonight. I know this is a, a, a second episode for me. I was live last night, too, doing a, a live show from people from Podcast Movement out in L.A. But I'm back with a, another episode tonight that's uh, really going to be... Uh, I think enlightening for a lot of the video creators that are, are either working with StreamYard right now or they're working with another platform um, that can up their game. You know, everybody is into making short form videos, long form videos, all that stuff on, on YouTube and all the shorts out there. And we're going to take your questions tonight. And we definitely want to hear from you and get your, your questions and comments into the show. I'll pull them up on the screen. And I'm also going to be doing another giveaway for a StreamYard duck, uh, Puddles duck, as well as a StreamYard mug. So stick around and enter hashtag the yard in the comment field of your preferred viewing platform that you're watching us on right now. We're on uh, YouTube and Twitter, X, LinkedIn, and Facebook. So these are all the live platforms. Plus, you know, too, this this show is actually an audio and video podcast. So you can get this show in Apple Podcasts or in Spotify as well. Um, so that's what's a little bit uh, different about this show is that you can get the video version of this in Apple Podcasts. A lot of people don't realize you can get video in Apple Podcasts app. But that that is something that's been around for many, many, many years. But we are really lucky to have joining us tonight um, Abby Walla, and let me pull her up on the screen here, and we can get her inter properly introduced here. <laughs> hey, Abby, how are you? Good. Hi, Rob. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you here. Your your partner isn't going to be able to join us tonight, uh, David Storch, but uh, but that's okay. We have you, and <laughs> that's that's probably all we need. So yeah, David David is out <laughs> sick, but trust me, you got the the better one out of the two. Right, of course. Just yes. the way that it goes. Now, um, yeah, he really wanted to be here, but unfortunately, he's right. not called. I'll rep the both of us today. So both of you are 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 basically award winning actors, writers, producers. You guys live in Los Angeles, and. And you guys have been uh, working with Hollywood uh, celebrities for for a long time, and and there's some kind of I, I think some I guess lesser known kind of techniques that Hollywood uses to make their stars um, you know compelling on camera and things like that. And and uh, uh, you two have had you know decades of experience in kind of distilling that down into simple steps, and I think that's really important for a lot of content creators to think about. And because I do think a lot of content creators, and 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 tell me if I'm wrong on this, Abby, really kind of some of them either go a little too casual on this and don't prepare and do the right things, and other ones kind of get a little anal about it and do probably too much. So yeah. So hopefully what we can do tonight is kind of sift that down and try and figure out kind of what's the proper balance. And part of what you do too is you have a consulting company as well um, and that, that teaches this stuff to, to people on a customized basis. It's called Crushing It on Camera. And maybe some of the people watching this have seen your, your online marketing for, for that too. And I'm going to share a little bit of that information as we progress in in the show a little bit so so those listening to this if they do want to get your your help um they they know where to go to actually do that so absolutely so let me um let, let, let me pull up a little bit of a screen so if you go to so let me pull up um your your current website and oh, yeah. that will give our funnel yeah right well yeah and i think it's hey, yeah that's an interesting thing for us to talk about too so I mean, a lot of the online creators that are watching this are looking to build businesses, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so your techniques with this uh, basically applies to to a lot of creators out there that want to help others and make a, make an income from that as well. But um, uh, here, let me pull up uh, another page. That uh, let's see here. Oh yeah, I guess it's already there. So. Let me pull it up here. So once you register uh, to 
get involved with with Abby and and David here, it takes you to this page too, and it has a bunch of testimonials in there from people that have worked with Abby and have actually uh, worked with David as well on on helping people get get better at being on camera. And I think that there's a there's an interesting thread, Abby, and I would like for you to talk about it. Is that when I look at these testimonials, this is this is really right in the wheelhouse of a, like a streamyard type of a platform, right? Where mm -hmm. where people are very natural and, and organic, and their backgrounds are not as kind of maybe a little bit contrived as mine, you know, with all these colors <laughs> and and with the doodads and the logos and things like that. That you don't really need that to be successful. I think that's the big thing. So, why don't you tell us a, a little bit about these testimonials and kind of set the, the ground rules. And also, there's no big microphones in front of people too. And just talk about that aspect of it, of, of um, what's the spectrum of what people need to think about when they're doing this? Yeah, absolutely. So, great questions, Robin. And ultimately, we do that very intentionally in what we're doing. It doesn't mean that our clients don't like to have some of them like to have a more produced look. You can see Milan on the upper right hand corner. You know, he's got a little bit more of a YouTube style yeah. background right. and vibe. Right. He likes to do more editing and things like that with his videos. But there's a big difference between using editing and things like this as a tool versus using it as a crutch. And most people it, who have not learned how to create videos properly are using these things as a crutch. They are trying to mask the um, lack of confidence, lack of engaging content, like all of those things with these fancy backgrounds or fancy equipment or lots of quick cuts and editing and all of that stuff. It doesn't mean that those things can't be beneficial and have their place in videos. But at the truth of the matter is, is you should be able to do any video in one continuous take that doesn't need editing. And then if you make a choice to have some edits because you're doing something stylistically or mm -hmm. something for comedic effect or something like that, then you absolutely have the choice to be able to do that. But you're not having to spend all this time editing because you couldn't get through a, a, a continuous take, which is unfortunately what a lot of people are dealing with. And so you'll see in most of our ads and stuff, there is no editing on purpose. Uh, a lot of our ads, we also, you know, we have nice cameras. A lot of our ads, we shoot with an iPhone. Why? Because we want to show that that's not the stuff that makes something convert. Uh, the difference between something converting and not converting is not whether they used an iPhone or a fancy camera. It's what was the content? How did you come across? Are you engaging? What frameworks are you using to take people, you know, hook people in, get them, you know, watching throughout the whole video and get them taking action. These are the elements that play into whether you have a profitable video or not. Um, not these external things like cameras and editing. Yeah, it's an interesting kind of thing, though. I think some of those things can help um, give a give a, a more professional presence to you. But maybe that professional presence maybe is a little bit of a hindrance to success because maybe don't, people don't think it's quite as authentic. Is that kind of the psychology going on here? And are we moving towards more of a more of a raw and organic type of approach to um, making content online? Or yeah. If it's too produced, it's maybe too contrived and not as authentic. Is that kind of the psychology going on here? Both can work. Um, so my business before Crush and Camera was I right. had a digital marketing agency. And so I used to run ads for tons of small businesses. And I would literally split test their produced, polished, sort of commercial type videos with their um more like iPhone selfie style type videos. And the vast majority of the time, the iPhone selfie style type videos would convert at a higher rate. And a big part of that is because of some of the things that you're talking about is people are seeking authenticity. They want to feel like it's real people. It's a big part of why we're also seeing like, for example, corporations are heavily dependent on influencer marketing at this point too, where they're spending all this money having just regular people with iPhones and big followings uh, promote their content because there is something that we are trained to do 
because we know what a commercial looks like to skip right away when we see it. Um, but if something feels like, oh, this is something my friend or family made, just that split second can make a difference in somebody watching your video versus not watching your video. Yeah, I do kind of wonder if um, over time here, that this is, and, and live comes into play here to some degree as well, where, where the authenticity and the trust really comes from being live versus a pre-recorded program, which I think a lot of the really big successful YouTubers out there are pre-recording a lot of what they're doing um, mm -hmm. because they can apply all those professional effects and and transitions and overlays and all this stuff, which is a little more difficult for for a live program to do, though it's possible with a tool like a StreamYard, like I'm doing right now, you, you can bring up and play things on the screen and and I think, uh, I just wonder if this is going to be the angle as we look to the future uh, to combat AI technology, a AI generated mm -hmm. video content that maybe people, it looks real. And I mean, because right now I could probably create a version of my show that's completely AI generated. And, and yeah. but, but will people trust it, right? Or can people see through that? And that's where this natural kind of speaking to the camera and and live component. Do you work with any of your clients around the, the live part of what they're doing mm -hmm. or is it mostly pre-recorded? Yeah, absolutely. And before I answer that, I'm seeing a few people in the comments section are asking about the background music. I'm not even hearing the background music, um, but they're saying it feels loud and repetitive. So I don't know if there's anything you're able to do on your end. I don't even hear background music. But yeah, I yeah, I probably should have turned it off a long time ago. Oh, okay. All right. Hold, hold <laughs> I got, it out. Uh, I, got, I got caught up in the conversation the and forgot about you're, it. Right. Yeah, in you're vibe. in the vibe yes, of it. Yes. You're grooving along to the so, background music. Um, so, yeah. yes, we absolutely help people with both live and pre-recorded videos. Um, they each have their, their place and their pros and their cons. Um, but if you can do um, a – did I did I lose you? No, no, I'm still here. Oh, you're still here. Okay. I was yeah, like, yeah, no, yeah. I'm just seeing me. Um, so the live videos are great because yes, it, if you can do live videos well, but again, you have to have a great preparation process. You have to know what you're doing because you don't have the option to be editing a live video. And so that's mm -hmm. where it becomes even more important to have this fundamental skill set because you can't be trying to like fix it in post, which a lot of people are doing with their pre-recorded videos. But both of them absolutely have their place. Um, and then in terms of like your question about AI, yes. I mean, I think we're going to get to a point that people are craving human interaction and authenticity even more because everything is going to start to look more and more the same because anybody's going to be able to put in some, you know, prompts and spit out a video that ultimately kind of looks like everybody else's video. But my questions are, you know, do I want to get to know the actual person that I'm going to be hiring and working with. If you're a real estate agent, do I trust the fact that you're just creating an AI type thing? Or am I trust you more when I see you telling a story about something and I'm like, oh, okay, this is a person that I'm going to trust to help me navigate one of the most expensive, biggest purchases of my life. Uh, so I think people are, we're going to get to that point where it's already happening, but people are going to crave even more and more of that authenticity the more that we get away from it. And it doesn't mean AI doesn't have its place, but I think in terms of, I, I don't think it's going to benefit us if it completely tries to replace human interaction, which I don't think it's going to fully be able to do. Yeah. So let's, let, let's transition to talk, talk a little bit about um, kind of just some kind of broad strokes of how people need to think about their on camera presence, right. And kind mm -hmm. of how they, they, I mean, I saw in, in the screenshots of some of those people that you guys are working with is that there's outdoor shots, there's indoor shots, there's shots in the, in like in an office, the audio isn't really a big priority either. It sounds like, I mean, from hearing some of them too, it's not like there's big, big microphones or anything like that there, but what's the philosophy around that kind of stuff too? But but how important is kind of how you speak to the audience too, if you look at the big picture of what the presentation looks like? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we actually absolutely want to be able to see you and hear you clearly. And with that, by the way, I actually can't see you anymore. So I don't know if you've um, disappeared off screen on, on, on purpose or, or accidentally. No, no, there no. You are. <laughs> um, well, yeah. I think one of the things that I'm actually managing the whole show myself. So I get caught up in the conversation. And th this is a little bit of this multitasking th that you have to do on on, on exactly. live that can be a little bit of a challenge too, because you get really enthralled in the conversation and you forget to, you know, transition. Switch so, back. Yeah. Right. That's right. Fine. I've, I've got my eyes on you. No worries. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm here. So if I zoom in on you, I think <laughs> because, you know, you're talking and I want the audience to see all of you and then I'll, I'll come back. So, All right. Sounds yeah. good. I was like, where'd he go? Um, so <laughs> in terms of answering that, yeah, um, I would say, yes, we want to be able to always see you uh, clearly and hear you clearly. So if somebody's like muffled and they have a really bad audio, like, yeah. yeah, people are not as likely to watch that. If it looks like somebody's sitting in the dark, people are not as likely to watch that. If somebody's framing so bad that they have like the entire frame above them, people are less likely to watch that stuff. But once you have the basics of equipment taken care of. And like I said, use an iPhone is totally fine or Android, whatever you have. The things that are most important are, are you dynamic and engaging? Are you delivering content that people really care about? Are you delivering it in a way that is hooking people in, keeping them watching and encouraging them to take action? Those are the things that actually lead towards a converting video or an effective video. Nobody, it, like is watching something being like, oh yeah, like the lights on this are sick and the background's awesome. This person is completely, absolutely boring, but I'm going to keep watching and buy from them. No, that's not what is making people want to buy from someone like cool lights, but really boring and terrible content. Absolutely not. But if your content is great and you're great and you're engaging, then all those things certainly can help uh, facilitate it, or it can just be tools in your tool belt if you want to do that stuff. Um, but the way that a lot of people are needing to create content, Instagram stories, Instagram reels, TikTok, things like that, these do not need to be highly produced videos. And in fact, like we were talking about earlier, the authenticity really goes far with these types of videos. Yeah, so as we think about um, kind of how a creator prepares for this, I know that's part of what you guys um, teach is kind of these these three buckets of uh, preparation and um, what, what what are those three buckets? I know, but preparation is a big part of that. Um, your yeah. authenticity is another part. What's the, what, what's the other piece to that puzzle? Too? Yeah. Something so we, we, we talk about it as basically being like a Venn diagram of like mm -hmm. three main components that lead to a converting video. And when you're able to nail these three components, that center section is like your video converts, your video, video is effective. And by the mm -hmm. way, Convert can mean a variety of different things because everybody has different goals in their businesses. Some people it's buy my stuff. Some people it's subscribe to my channel. Some people it's comment and engage, like, send to your friend, go take action in your life. So when I say convert, it can be, it's kind of encompassing all of these things of my video is effective. Um, and the, the three main components of that are one is preparation. So mm -hmm. you were kind of getting to that point earlier when you were saying there's a couple camps of people. There's the people that are full on winging it. They're pulling out their phone, they're hitting record and they're just kind of talking and they might ramble all over the place. They might jump from topic to topic. They might go blank, forget what they're gonna say. Um, if they're doing a pre-recorded video, you see a lot of these people just be like, wait, what am I supposed to stop, start, stop, start doing lots of takes. No. In the other camp, you've got the sort of scripted, potentially teleprompter crowd, uh, which is trying to map out every single specific word that is going to be said. And for the most part, you know, these are being written in a way that is not natural and conversational to how people speak. And then, so it's taking them a long time to write a script and then they're trying to memorize the script. And then every time they mess up, then there's again, start, stop, start, stop, million takes later, people are mm -hmm. frustrated, frustration through the roof, confidence is dropping and they're, they're not ending up with a video that they even want to post. And so these are the yeah. two camps. Um, 
in doing this, so this is where like having the right preparation process comes into play because yes, you should be prepared. You should know what you're going to say and how you're going to say it, but you should mm -hmm. be able to do that in a natural and conversational way. And very importantly, we have what we call our three take rule. So you should never need more than three takes to knock out an awesome video. And when I say an awesome video, I mean, in one continuous take, not something that has to be, you know, chopped up and trying to find the best 30 seconds out of 10 10 minutes of rambling, but a mm -hmm. good continuous video. Um, because if you can't do that quickly and easily, there's no way you're going to sustain a video marketing strategy overall, because that requires consistency. It's not going to be one video that's going to change your life. It's going to be having consistent videos wherever you're going to be posting them. So if you don't have a great preparation process, that's going to be the foundation for everything moving forward. So if it takes you hours and hours to create a video or it takes you all weekend to create a video or it takes you all week to create a video, you're just not going to be able to sustain that. You're too busy. You've got too many other things going on in your life. So having that really awesome prep process, you can knock it out in three takes or less, knock it out in minutes instead of hours. That's going to be really crucial. Then from there, it is the, um, the the presentation. So how are you coming across on camera? Are you engaging? Are you dynamic? Do you have levels when you're talking about things? Or are you kind of staying in one safe zone that is a flatter version of your personality because you're nervous and it's not really mm -hmm. having a lot of levels? Maybe you're monotone, robotic, like whatever that is. Yeah. That's going to make people tune out. If you're not engaging to watch, they're not going to keep watching. And then the third component of this is what we call like the roadmap or the frameworks that you're using. So this is what I was talking about earlier is like, are you using specific structures, frameworks, roadmaps where you can hook people in so they stop, mm -hmm. they're not scrolling past you to the, the next thing? Can you keep them super engaged? And can you get them to the point that they want to take action by the end of the video? So if you are missing any one of these three components, your video is likely not to convert. So if you're great at preparing for your video and you're using the right frameworks, but you're not, your presentation's not good, you're not engaging, you're boring, your video is probably not going to do well. If you're using, you know, if you're engaging, but, and you're using the right frameworks, okay, your video might do well, but if it's taking you hours to create the video, like I said, you're not going to be able to sustain that, you know, so any one of these things dropped off means that your video is likely not going to succeed, or you are not going to succeed with your whole overall strategy. You really need to have all three of those things in gear. And then that's the sweet spot of like, okay, Okay, these are the people that are getting the results that they want from video. Mm -hmm. So if we think about um, kind of taking what you're saying there, I think those are all terrific kind of um, levels to, to reach. But how, how do you think um, a, a person that is kind of struggling to have that charisma on camera, um, uh, learning how to do that and having that experience, um, and is that comes from practice or – or what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, great question. So it comes from practicing in the right way. Um, mm -hmm. Being awesome on camera is a skill set just like anything else. It is a skill set mm -hmm. just like building a great funnel or um, learning how to manage podcasts or any of those things. It's just yeah. a skill set. And so there are fundamental ways to be able to learn how to do that. Um, and a big thing of it, it's like one, learning the right skills, but then it's also like chipping away at the things that are stopping you from being able to do that. So a lot of people, um, I believe the fear of public speaking, I think is like the number one fear above death that people have. And, and, and it's not that something necessarily horrible is going to happen to you from public speaking, but this is a very common fear that people have. And so when you get on camera and you can see yourself and all of that stuff, it just adds to whatever insecurities or vulnerabilities people already have, um, especially in this day and age of social media where everybody is an expert and people are going to want to troll you and like all this stuff, there's a lot of resistance that comes up from being on camera. So half of it is like learning the right fundamental skill sets to be able to do it. Right. And the other part of it is chipping away at those things that are stopping you from doing it. All these walls that you've built up or like things that are getting in the way of you being your actual self on camera. Mm -hmm. So the big, the main thing is like, we want to capture the essence of who you are in person with your friends, with your family, right. with your clients and be able to have that person come across on camera. 
Yeah, so if you think about trying to do this very naturally and organically, I mean, I, th I think the whole preparation thing is 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 a little bit of a challenge to some degree because preparation can lead to too much kind of structure, right? Um, and too much focus on using specific words or using a specific concept. And I think when people create content, like what I do with this show is, is a little bit of an example. I create a complete outline for the show, but typically I don't use much of it. So it's one of those things that it, it structures your mind to know what you're trying to drive across, but it may not be what actually comes out of your mouth specifically. So, so yeah. is that part of this too? And then when you work with a client, do you kind of work with them to do mock presentations and point out kind of ways that they can, they can come across a little bit better on, on camera? Yeah, absolutely. So that comes back down to preparation. And right. a big part of the way that we work is we you, you can't just be absorbing the information, you have to actually be taking action on it. Um, mm -hmm. And so, so the way that we structure our program is that at the end of every module, we basically have like a homework prompt, a, a video for you to be able to um, implement what you just learned, you bring that video to the coaching calls, we screen share, we break it down, we take out the scalpel, here's what you're doing great. Here's where it gets boring or flat or like, here's where, you know, you need to have more levels that emotions not coming across in the video, mm -hmm. or this is where you're rambling and people are going to fall off or this yeah. call to action is not strong enough. Whatever those things are, being able to watch it and really learn like what works and why, but you have to be doing it. Um, and then right. one of like the best things on a long form thing like this, you know, I have no idea what you're going to be asking me today you didn't give me the questions ahead of time no, um, that's right. in in what way am i quote unquote prepared well in well, general I know because of your about. knowledge right because i know my knowledge i know what are good stories that would are going to you know if you ask mm -hmm. me something that i need to have a specific story about or whatever that is i have those things in my back pocket at this point and so a big part of preparation is if you know your stories or you know what metaphors and analogies are impactful or what is the best way to deliver a certain information you can apply that in any context whether that is uh you know talk to camera type video or you're doing an ad or you're doing an interview and you know the 30 second version you know the five minute version and you know the 10 minute version of it depending on what what uh yeah. the context is yeah and uh pete george has a has a comment here too so you are what you're just push record and watch yourself back so i think what pete is saying here is uh you know do some test videos uh, do you do this with your clients too? And they did, did ask them to produce a couple of episodes and you guys watch it and then give feedback. Is that what you guys are, so we do are, are give doing with this yes. process? So that's right. like what I was saying with like the homework videos is like you're doing videos and then right. we're giving you feedback on them. Um, mm -hmm. So yes, there is an element of that. The issue with like just push your coordinate, watch yourself back is if that works for you, great. But so many people are not able to be unbiased when watching themselves. Yeah. Um, and okay. so all of those things like uh, come up and, and people are just like hating on themselves or just because you think you see something and you're like, oh, um, I know that this is boring doesn't mean that you know how to fix it either. Um, okay. So yes, there is an element of like, doing it and watching. Um, but also a lot of people just watch it and they just hate it and then they stop doing yeah. it. Right. Do you see that um, certain people have natural innate talent to be able to do this effectively? Um, that I, I'm sure you see it all the time where people don't think they do, but they really do. It's just maybe kind of tweaking their 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 approach and their psychology around it because I do think a, a lot of what you're talking about here is really psychology and how you know self confidence your your experience of being a presenter and talking in front of people you know doing a pre recorded video I mean I used to do a pre recorded radio show for many many years and one of the hardest things and th this is why I love live so much is that um, pre recorded it gives you the option to make a mistake. Um, you know, you're probably maybe a little less focused than live. And that's why I've kind of moved towards live is because th 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 there's really no retakes, right? So you have mm -hmm. to get it, get it right to begin with, but you're always going to have mistakes. So, but 
you know, mistakes also drive authenticity too, because everybody makes mistakes, especially when you're live. But but this whole concept of of talent and then being able to learn and build confidence, um, doesn't that take a little bit of time? Um, you know, but your examples that you share with some of your clients have been like they grew their channel to, you know, a certain level, you know, uh, within a relatively short period of time. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just a, a, a remarkable performance achievement to be able to help people reach that kind of level of confidence quickly. I don't know. What's yeah. the time frame that you typically see with a client um, yeah. getting them to, they can be like that. Right. Yes, there is like five good points in there. So let me try know, to remember each of them and hit on them. Yeah, I tend to so do one, that, right? one yeah. around mistakes and authenticity. Like, yeah. yes, it's okay if you trip over your word once and pick it up and keep going. If you were having a real life conversation and you were like, um, you know, da 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 da, oh shoot, I meant this, you wouldn't be like, turn around and walk away and then be like, I'm going to come back and start this conversation over again. Like, no, you right. wouldn't do that. You would just, correct yourself and you keep going. There's a yeah. difference between tripping up here and there, saying the wrong thing here and there and being able to recover from it versus people that are tripping over every other word, which just means like they're not prepared effectively for their videos or their nerves are getting in the way and whatever that is. So yeah. yes, to an extent, like we're not seeking perfection. I've said, um, here and there in this thing, no one's going like, well, she's an idiot, hopefully. Um, but if I were saying, um, every other word that would get very distracting for you and you'd be like, she doesn't really know what she's talking about or she's not confident or whatever that is. So yes, to an extent it breeds authenticity, but if it's a lot, then that starts to undermine your authority and your expertise. Mm -hmm. um then your question um as i said then yeah. your question around are some people naturals and others everyone comes to us at different skill sets and yeah, some honest. people certain parts are easier than other people so some people are naturally very comfortable and charismatic but that doesn't mean that their videos are converting. So just like, remember I was saying the three different things. So there's you know one of the per people that you scrolled through on our testimonials, he's very comfortable, very charismatic on camera. Nerves was not an issue for him. And yet he knew he was leaving so much money on the table because he didn't have the right structures and frameworks. So he would hop on and he would just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. And some people would be into it, but a lot of people would fall off. And so his stuff, he knew he was leaving money on the table because they weren't converting at the level that they could. So that was something he needed on. Other people, great with structures, maybe not as comfortable on camera. Uh, so there's just like such a varying degree where some people have a more mm -hmm. natural inclination to one part of it than another part of it and whatever that is. But I will say to you, like we have, there has in the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that we have helped be able to achieve this, there has never been somebody that I've been like, you know what? you just can't do it. Like you, you're just destined to suck on camera forever. Like you just are not going to get there. Like we've literally never had that happen because it, like I said, and, and I, and I say this over and over again to not be like, you need to hire us to teach you to do this. I say this over and over again to normalize the fact that this is a skill set that anyone can learn. And I say that because a lot of people come to us and their confidence is shot because it's something they've been trying for a while. Or when they were a kid, people would make fun of them and pick on them for like how they, you know, speaking yeah. in front of their class or like things like that. Or a lot of people coming to us where English is their second, third, fourth, fifth language. Or we've even had a woman who is recovering from a stroke and her brain literally was having to be rewired while she's like learning from skill set. And I and and I'm telling you all this because it I just want everyone to understand there's not something wrong with you because you're not great on camera yet. It's just a skill set that you have not learned. Yeah, and you do have to kind of work your way through that. I know uh, when I started doing doing a radio show, I I had no experience being on the radio or talking into a microphone or presenting to a group uh, or anything like that. It's just something that I just uh, work my way through. It did take many, many years of consistent uh, getting behind a microphone, and uh -huh. and I wasn't really doing that much video. It was mainly, and then I started getting involved in doing some some TV work off and on, 
because of the radio show. And, okay. and so it, it started to evolve more and more into doing more and more video, but that was actually a lot of that when I got involved was before the internet. So, so like what we're seeing now with the tools that are out there now, um, anyone can do this. And, and that in fact is kind of what we're seeing happen. You know, the popularity of TikTok and the popularity of mm -hmm. shorts and YouTube and stuff with the, the hundreds of millions of creators out there, you can totally see that, that there is success out there available. And I'm hearing talk too now that the opportunity for um, uh, user-generated content creators um, is going to double over the next two to three years. So um, I think the opportunity, th this isn't a bad time to get involved in creating online content. I think a lot of companies, like you said earlier, are really relying on a medium like this as a is really their their customer relationships channels uh, absolutely and increasingly yeah. we're seeing seeing a lot of expectations put on employees of companies to get on camera more and to represent their companies and create those interpersonal relationships with customers mm -hmm, for sure and if you are an entrepreneur solopreneur small business mm -hmm. owner you know very likely you are the one who has to be the face of your business. It's not something that you can outsource to somebody else and nor should you because you're the one who's the expert at the thing. And it's going to kind of come across a way better if you're the one that's able to convey this message, convey your passion for what you do, all right. of that stuff. And, you know, you said like there, you know, it's becoming an increasingly sort of popular thing to do. I mean, it's, it's getting to the point that if you don't do it, and I would venture to say it's already at this point that you are going to be left behind. And yes, everybody is doing it in a, in a way, which just is going to get to the point where it's going to be, it's more and more important to be able to do it really well. There used to be a time where it was like, oh, this person did a Facebook live. That's cool. I respect that. I'm going to follow them, even if it wasn't necessarily good. We're not at that point anymore. There's so much great content out there that how are you going to rise above the rest? How are you going to cut through the noise and all that stuff? Because there's a lot of great content out there and there's a lot of terrible content out there. There's just a lot of content out there and what's going to distinguish you um, from the people that don't get any results. Um, because yeah, I think that's ultimately what it is, is it's not just creating the content is, is who's going to capture those eyeballs, who's going to keep the eyeballs and who's going to get results from it. Yeah. And I, I do kind of wonder, you know, it, increasingly being able to do this uh, on camera and even live is going like we talked about earlier is going to be increasingly important uh, for people in their careers and in their, their their jobs as a as a approach to represent their companies. Now, some companies don't let employees do online media because they're trying to control the the message, right? Mm -hmm. um, but but I've like I used to work for for Microsoft for many many years, and I. I did hundreds and hundreds of podcasts back in the early days of podcasting representing Microsoft. So it was one of those things that um, some companies are open to it. You know, you, you look at like an Apple and Apple doesn't allow their employees to get online and talk about anything related to Apple. Um, mm -hmm. Typically, I think they've Yeah, kind that's of, a unique mm -hmm. situation. I mean, I would venture to say that's probably not most of your audience. Um, and no. even people that do work for corporations, if you work in, say, like corporate sales, um, that it's still a compelling thing. Instead of just emailing somebody a long proposal, doing yeah. screen sharing on Loom or StreamYard or whatever that is, yeah. and being able to you know have your have your picture in the upper corner as you're walking through a proposal right. is so much more personal than just sending somebody a long PDF <laughs> of something. Um, well, think, and so yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it's almost like a basic skill um, for survival now of a being a, a person of the world, right? Is being able to navigate an online kind of video presence and be able to work with a microphone and be able to understand how to do this. I, I think the pandemic really put a magnifying glass yeah. on that, right? Where people were stuck at home because we saw in the podcast industry just an explosion of new content creators getting involved in podcasting. Um, during that time, I think we, we were growing at like 100,000 new shows a month. 
back mm. during, during the pandemic. And then after the pandemic, after everybody kind of went back to normal again, we saw the number of new shows drop. And yeah. We've also seen a lot of, um, uh, a lot of those shows were started because people had extra time because they were stuck at home. But exactly. Back in the office or they're back working, yeah. working more, right? It's, it's it, there, there's less time. Yeah, less time, but it's also like a sink or swim type situation. So of those 100,000 new podcasts, like how many of them actually thrive? So same with everybody that's like starting to do video and, and all of that. It's like I was saying earlier is just because, you know, what's the difference between people who are creating videos and not getting results and people who are creating videos and getting tons of results, whatever results means to you. Well, it comes back to those things that I was talking about earlier, where it's like, uh, not everyone's entitled to have converting videos, not everyone's entitled to make money from their videos, not everyone's entitled to, you know, these are pro results that you're looking for. And I think a lot of people think, well, I'm supposed to make videos, so let me just throw a video out there. But they're not really putting a lot of thought into like, what is their strategy? strategy with it and doing it well. Um, and then they're, yeah. they're not getting great results from them if, or any results from them. You know, they get a couple likes or a little bit of engagement. Nobody's clicking, nobody's buying, nobody's subscribing, like all of that stuff. And it's because sort of quote unquote, anyone can do it at a relatively, for lack of a better word, like amateur level. But if you're seeking pro results, yeah. you got to do it at a pro level. Um, mm -hmm. and that comes down to those things I was talking about earlier. Like, you know, are you prepared? Like, are you, how are you coming across and like, what are the frameworks and stuff that you're using? Yeah. So when you guys talk about the, the Hollywood method now, granted, you know, working with actors and performers that are on television or movies or whatever, they have to be concerned about these techniques as well. And I'm sure that they've, they really worked hard and honed their skills on, being able to take a script and be able to present it in a yeah. way that's believable, right? And that is kind of a little bit of a different skill than I think what we're talking about here. But mm -hmm. there is a little bit of overlap there because this concept of acting and performing is is part of that, right? So, so as you think about creating content, but you want to be authentic, but yet it's... I spent a lot of years playing um, competitive basketball, right? So I would... I would mentally prepare um, to go out on the court and compete, right? So I had to be focused, really focused on what my goals were of being out there um, and and really be able to think on my feet, right? And not not really have, it, it, it's more like training myself to just react to things in a certain way. And that's where practice came in too. So, you know, and I think that's an interesting kind of approach. I, I think a lot of actors went to acting school, they went to to train to be a good actor and a big a good performer, right? And have emotion and have that. So how do you think we should navigate that that um, kind of approach of being authentic but yet having some of these acting skills? It yeah. sounds like I've I've commented over the years that that it may be helpful for someone to get comedy training or something like that or or you know be an you know, kind of a performance training, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. that, that helps. I mean, yeah, we, we obviously draw like we're actors, writers, producers, like we draw a lot yeah. from our background and acting exercises and things like that. The difference is there, I mean, there's a few major differences between what an actor is trying to accomplish and what a business owner or entrepreneur is trying to accomplish is right. one, like, you fortunately only need to be yourself. Like you don't have to learn how to play a bunch of characters and all of that stuff. Um, but I would also venture to say you also don't want to have to go to Juilliard for four years to create an Instagram reel. I would imagine. Yeah, you want an easier process to be able to do that. So it's a little bit of a different thing, which is also why it's... Um, let me take a step back and kind of pull back sure. the curtain in Hollywood is, you know, one of the biggest trends right now, like I was saying earlier, is people are scripting and using teleprompters and things like that for their videos. A lot of people even using chat GPT to create scripts that they then recite or log, you know, throw into a teleprompter app and all that stuff. But if we take a look at Hollywood, people train for years and years and years and years and years. And they say that only 2% of actors actually book work. And there's a variety of reasons to it, but 
one of the reasons is, and 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 by the way, that two percent is not two percent of people are George Clooney and Julian Roberts. That's two percent of people book work at all, meaning they might be the waiter that's like, hey, your table is this way, and then disappears and is never yeah. seen again in that episode. So that's only like two percent of people who have years and years of training. And and there's a lot of reasons for it, the industry, blah, 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 blah. But a big part of that is that it is so hard to deliver a script in a natural, conversational, believable, authentic way. And so David and I always say, why would you as a business owner who doesn't have years and years and years of acting experience, set yourself up like that you're not setting yourself up for success and same goes with using a teleprompter for roles that require a teleprompter so think hosting gigs things like that people take so many classes to be able to to look at a teleprompter and deliver it in a natural conversational way that doesn't look like they are reading across the screen or or any of that stuff mm -hmm. um yeah. You're literally not even allowed to audition for roles where you'd be required to use a teleprompter unless you have excessive, ex extensive, not excessive, also excessive, oh, uh, cool. teleprompter experience. And so there are a lot of fundamental differences. But the good thing for, for you all is that you're experts in what you're doing. You're experts in what you're talking about. If you weren't an expert in it, you probably wouldn't be creating a video about it. And so it's not very different than like what we, what one of the examples that we use is like if you were at a, a dinner party and I'll use you as an example Rob and I asked you a question about podcasting you wouldn't go hold on a second let me go step away and I'm gonna write a script and then I'm gonna like rehearse it no. for days and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna yeah. tell you if you should or shouldn't do a podcast no you would be able to be like, if I said what's one tip about starting a podcast, you'd be able to rile that off like nobody's business. So anyway, yep. all of you who are experts in whatever you do, whether you are a coach or a consultant or a real estate agent or a doctor or a lawyer or a dog trainer or whatever you are, you're an expert at what you do. And it's not different than if somebody were to ask you this question at a dinner yeah. party. Yes, it's going to be a little bit more refined, polished version, but our preparation process is take it coming from the angle of the fact that you're already an expert uh and you are you and so we're not trying to make you someone else we're not trying to make you us it doesn't matter if you're introverted you we're just helping you be the best version of you on camera so that mm -hmm. when people see you on camera and then people meet you whether on zoom or in real life it's congruent it matches it's not like oh this right. is a completely different person um right. but, but those match and so in in many ways it's um fortunately for you doesn't take years at Juilliard to be able to create videos for your business. Yeah, I think that's, I just wonder sometimes, you know, I used to work in LA and in the Beverly Hills and I, I work with quite a few celebrities mm -hmm. and I have to say that many of them, and this is, this is an interesting takeaway from this, um, don't have a very good personality outside <laughs> of their ability to read a script, right. And to perform a script. Right. It's almost like they need to be scripted to be decent human beings. Yeah. So yeah. it's one of those um, interesting things that I think everyone can do this, but I think your level of success uh, it is really predicated on your ability to come across as real and genuine and to connect with other people. And I think it is an attitude thing. I, I really do think that. And that's that's why you see certain creators really do well, and other ones not not so much. And it's and it's hard to to train someone to have a a compelling personality. Um, I don't, you know, that's that kind of X factor. Do you guys? Yeah, I mean, what's your thought on that? I mean, but like, what's the definition of compelling? Because different people resonate with different people. So right. some people might really vibe with like the energetic, I'm like a YouTube personality. And other people maybe want someone who is a little bit more laid back and a little bit more introverted. So it's important that you're not trying to, uh, yeah, the, as this person saying, be yourself, which is easy to say, hard to do. But I would say whoever you are, that's why we're not trying to um, make you anybody else. We're trying to make you the most engaging version of yourself. Everyone has levels. Some people are very extroverted and their levels look like this. Other people, yeah. their levels are more like this and they're more laid back or they have a dry sense of humor. And both of those things, there, there's not... A, 
a, a better or a worse of those. You're just going to other different people are going to resonate with each of that. But what people don't resonate is if you're this thing and you're trying to pretend to be that thing or you're that thing and trying to pretend to this thing, it smells inauthentic. It's not genuine. But if you are the best version of yourself on camera, yeah, you're not going to be everyone's cup of tea and you don't need to be. But the people that do vibe with that are going to want to keep watching. So what if a person is kind of in their natural, authentic way, they're kind of, they speak in a way that's kind of boring um, and monotone and, you know, I've, I've struggled with this myself too, because I, have, I, I come across an audience as, as kind of like a, like a person that's um, a little bit more laid back, not as kind of like out there in, in your face. And I've really had to work on trying to project and try and bring volume level differences. So mm -hmm. uh, some people have it right away, just in their natural behavior. Maybe they have a certain amount of comedic talent naturally. Mm -hmm. um, so when you work with someone, uh, do you try and pull that out of them of, of using inflection and, and raising and lowering their, their, their voice level, like I'm doing right now mm -hmm. uh, to, to emphasize certain points and to pull back from other points. It depends on the, the psychology, but, but you kind of want to get to a point where it's kind of natural. It's not kind of like uh, contrived, like, like we were talking about here. Absolutely. Yeah. There's very specific, like you were asking, should everybody have a comedy background or things like that? I, yeah. David and I do, we have both of you can do. I can tell from your videos that there's some <laughs> humor, humor in your DNA. <laughs> yeah. And that's who we are. But I would say a lot of our clients are not that. A lot of our clients are more introverted, laid back, different personalities. Um, but we pull from a lot of like, for example, improv exer exercises or things that are helped to pull out that personality to help you basically. The biggest thing is you, you've got to bust through that comfort zone. So a lot of people think that they're coming across one way, but they're coming across as a much flatter version of their actual right. selves when they're on camera. And so mm -hmm. you have to break through that comfort zone. And in these exercises, what we really are pushing people to do or pulling people to do is going way further than they think so that you really are developing in the same way that a singer is working on their scales and their range. They're, you know, it's not that they have to Mm -hmm. sing every note in every song that would be very boring but they need to know all of the notes and all of their range so that in whatever song they need to hit that note or they need to hit that note it's the same thing with being on camera and telling stories is like you need to figure out your range blow past that comfort zone so you know you can hit different different things at different times whenever it's needed if you're you know a health coach and you're dealing with people that are really suffering right now. And you're like, hey, do you feel terrible about your life all the time? Can't sleep? Like, that's going to be terrible for people. But that's where like tone and all this stuff comes into play. But if you know that sometimes it's like, hey, are you feeling really frustrated about this or that? Or like, you can't sleep or, you know, being able to really connect with people with where they're at. Um, that's why I said earlier, like somebody being energetic is not necessarily a pro in some situations, because right. if they're just being like happy, smiley, energetic when talking about terrible, sad things, like that's right. Like, nobody wants that doesn't that. come across as real, right? It doesn't come across yeah. as real. But being yeah. able to know what your personal range is and everybody's range is going to look a little bit different, then you can hit on different things at different times and you can be able to pull out those emotions to really be able to connect with your audience where they're at right now. Yeah. Square Table here makes a comment. Uh, you'd be surprised how many friends think that they are ready for the big time when it comes to doing <laughs> this. And and uh, I, I bring them over and they freeze on camera. And... I think it is something that's that's a that's a factor for many people, especially if they're new to this. Um, yeah, and don't feel comfortable with kind of you know doing what you need to do, which can be can be a little impersonal, right? Especially if you're sitting in front of a like a DSLR camera or something like that that's on a tripod or something, yeah. or 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 your phone or whatever. You're, you're like going, okay, I'm I'm not really speaking to someone, so you have to really. You know, I've always heard this with presenters that, you know, always think of your audience as 
in their underwear sitting out there and that'll bring a smile to your face, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's like, that's the, the old adage. That's the classic, and, right? But I think, yeah, yeah. And, and ultimately, yes, you do have to be thinking of a specific person. So like a lot of people will say, you know, uh, how come I'm comfortable speaking in front of a large audience and I'm terrified when I'm speaking on camera? Uh, there's not even anyone here in the room. But yeah. that's actually what the difference is, is. If you're speaking on stage or in live, is you can look at people, or, or even on Zoom, you can look at someone, you're getting that immediate reaction. Are they into mm -hmm. it? Are they nodding their head? Are they laughing at your joke? Are they tuned out looking at their phone? You're getting that immediate feedback to go like, I'm doing well, I'm not doing well, whatever that is. When it's just you and this camera lens and you're staring at this inanimate object, you don't know how you're coming across and it can be incredibly disorienting. Thing. So a big thing is developing that skill set of being able to, to know when you feel a certain way internally, you know what it looks like externally, and you're trusting how it's coming across. Yeah. Genesis 1 um, posted a comment here. I was too animated and I toned it down, didn't feel comfortable. So I went back to just being myself. So there's kind of like a spectrum here that you need to identify, right? Yeah. But you can be inauthentically enthusiastic <laughs> that may be yeah. beyond people's perception of your personality and what you should be doing, right? And it also needs to be contextual to the content as well. Exactly. Uh, it, it feels like. And so this is really kind yeah. of, there's a lot of psychology behind this, right? And the more I think about this, it's like, you know, and that's kind of the, the groove that you have to kind of get in eventually with what you're doing is you kind of have an idea of who your audience is and get that aligned with your personality, but yet also push the, the edges of that personality and add, add maybe, and I know I've always heard this comment that uh, you should always tell a joke or something like that, or you should always, you know, get, get people to smile or have an emotional reaction to something is, is the key to keeping their attention. Are those techniques that you guys try and bring out in your, your trainings as well? I mean, not if someone's not funny. <laughs> like, if, I mean, well, not, yeah, I, but can they become funny if you guys teach but, them the But but, the so, technique? but we're not teaching comedy. Like, we're, what we are teaching is converting yeah. an the videos and not everybody needs comedy to be able to do that if that is your strong suit and like i said people have so many different types of personality comedic personalities too like we have this one guy who's so dry but it was hysterical he was like so you know like i don't want to say the word flat it was dry because it wasn't flat he had his little little levels and he had a you know a twinkle in his eye and he would say these really funny things um and it was yeah. unexpected because of his personality yeah. but that's one of his personality some people are not particularly comedic and that's fine but as long as they're sincere and they're genuine and again it comes back to content are you delivering really compelling content that people are getting the information that yeah. they want because at the end yeah. of the day people are, are watching your video for a reason they're not watching your video just because they want to watch you you guys like if you guys are not here because of my ego, you're here because you're looking to gain something out of spending this evening with Rob and me. So you have a struggle or something that you're looking for a solution for. It's not like you're just like, oh, I'm bored and I'm going to waste an hour listening to this thing. So it makes Abby feel good. Like, no, not at all. You're watching this for a specific reason. And so I think that's one of the things too, is a lot of times people are so focused on themselves and how they're coming across on camera versus actually thinking about, who is this video for? What does this person want from this video? What am I trying to get across? Who am I trying to help? And really taking all that focus off of yourself and putting it on the person on the other side of that camera lens who's trying to gain something from watching your video. Um, because ultimately, at the end of the day, everyone is, not to use this word in a negative way, selfish. They're watching it for a reason. They want to gain something. And that's fine. And so everything you do, the content that you're delivering, if you're telling a story, you're not telling a story just to tell it because you need to get it off your chest. No, you're telling a story to educate or teach something or help someone shift their mindset. There's a reason that you're telling that story. And so that's one of the big things that I see too is like, we're so hyper focused on ourselves when we're creating videos instead of actually thinking about who the video is for. Yeah, and I see a comment here from uh, from Examine Me X. Um, 
says, I talk with my hands as well. And, and, and Levin, I see that, <laughs> Abby, you you use your hands a lot to express yourself too. And I try I'm to- I'm Italian. Do that what do you expect? Right, exactly. There you go. Right. But my camera shot is so tight, you can't oftentimes see my hands, but but occasionally, but you're, you're back a little bit. And so you can see hand gestures. What yeah. is the, the framing of the shot? Um, how is that important? Do people need to see those hand gestures? You think? Uh, yeah, I would just say you, you ha always have to be mindful of your framing. So it would be weird if you just saw like my fingers coming up like here and there, like <laughs> randomly, like in the it's a little frame. weird, right? That yeah. would just be like really strange. So if you are someone that talks with your hands a lot, you might have to be a little bit wider. Um, and you also just have to make sure that it matches the authenticity of who you are. Some people get more hands uh, hands talky when they're nervous and it's not necessarily authentic. And so it's not necessarily attached to anything specific that they're saying their hands are just being waving around. So it really just depends on, on those yeah. things. Like, again, like if it, it seems like it's authentic to them and so it makes sense, but a lot of people, it's just like, they're like, I'm nervous. So my hands are flying all over the place. Well, it, it, I think it does trigger some, some, enthusiasticness to express with your hands too. Cause I find it with myself as if I don't use my hands, I'm, I, I'm probably less expressive because I'm using my hands as kind of like a, an indication of my thoughts too. It's, mm -hmm. it's interesting how the, the mind connects the hands. It's almost like we're doing sign language with our audience, but, but we're really not. <laughs> yeah i mean you don't want to be overly dependent on it either like it like i also know how to not use my hands so if like sometimes so i'm like okay down. it's getting to be yeah. a bit much and then i'll just like put my <laughs> hands down and i can be very relaxed and i'm not using my hands right now and it's fine um because there's other indicators of it where my voice has tone or things like that so it's just being mindful of it not overdoing things making sure it's coming from an authentic place versus a nervous tick place yeah, and I think this this topic that, that we've been focused on is really kind of connecting with the live um, viewers on the program. I mean, I'm getting a lot of interesting comments and, and questions that are coming through on this because I think a lot of people kind of wonder about this stuff, uh, wonder about how we kind of present ourselves and what that should include, what that, that you know, what that shouldn't include. Are there any things that you should kind of avoid? Is it is it really critical to be looking at the camera all the time? I know that, you know, that's that's always a big question in my mind. I do have a teleprompter, but I don't use it for text. I use it for being able to see like my guest or that kind of stuff. Oh, um, got it. Um, if you, so in an interview setting, like, yes, I'm looking at the camera as much as I can, but I also want to look at you when I'm talking to you. So it's a little bit different uh, yeah. on a Zoom meeting, same thing. Sometimes you're looking at the person on the screen. If I was just creating a video to my phone, a video just to my camera. Yes, I absolutely want to be looking into the camera lens. It is normal that sometimes as human beings, we're thinking about something and our eyes go this way and we come back. That's totally right. fine. It's more of an issue when you see people are looking like everywhere but the camera lens because they're nervous um, right. or somebody's reading their teleprompter or whatever that is. So for the most part, again, we're the, the camera lens is not an inanimate object. It's the person watching your video. And so think about if you're having a conversation with someone in real life and they're looking everywhere but at you, that feels weird. Like, have you ever been talking to somebody and they're like this? They never look like, at you, right? And then you look, and then you look behind you because you're like, oh, what are they looking at? And you're like, oh, I don't like, you know, it feels weird. And so it's the same thing um, where it's like, again, it's fine if sometimes I think about what I'm saying, I come back or whatever that is. But if for the most part, I'm not looking into the camera lens, it's just going to feel disconnecting for the person watching the video. Yeah. And I think that the worst thing is, and th this applies to real life too, of, of, you know, talking to someone and you're on your phone at the same time. <laughs> that not, too. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't advise that for, you know, your, your, your video show that you're on your, on your phone while you're doing the show. So. Oh, should I not be texting my mom while we're talking? <laughs> yeah, right. Now should I not be doing that? Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. somebody said there's some audio popping. I know someone earlier said something about my audio. I think it might be the settings, but I did I did adjust the audio setting on. Could be I me too, because I do have a lavalier mic on. And oh. It's actually a 
probably a good good question for me to ask too is um, how do you guys think about the audio side of it? Do, do you guys recommend getting like a little wireless microphone that works with your iPhone or your, your, your phone versus just relying entirely on the, the microphone that's built into the, to the phone? Um, yes. I mean, I would say don't let that be the thing that stops you from starting. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I was saying earlier, if you got one of these, you can make a right. video. Like you don't need more as long as, again, I can see you clearly and hear you clearly. So if you are creating a video and you're outside and it's super windy and we're just hearing and we can like barely hear you, okay, that's going to make someone stop watching the video. Um, but it's, or like I said, if you're in the dark or something like that, it's those types of things. But as long as someone can see you clearly and hear you clearly, that's fine. But yes, if you are someone who is a fitness coach and you're going to have the camera over there and then you're going to be further back demonstrating stuff and you're, you know, 10 feet away from the camera, then you're going to want a wireless lab mic um, that's connected to it. And you and you're we can hear your voice clearly. If you're someone who wants to do a lot of stuff out, uh, outside, you're going to need to have control your audio. If you're someone who's just sitting at your desk a lot, you can get away with a desktop mic. Um and, uh, you know, that that type of a thing. And so it really just depends on what your needs are. But I would say don't let that be something that stops you from getting started. Yeah, because I've got a, a a big boom mic sitting right right here that's picking up my audio. Plus, I have a lavalier mic on as well. So, yeah, I was like, I got my Yeti mic. Yeah, which is why I was confused. Somebody earlier was saying like my mic sounded weird, but I switched the setting. So I think it's OK now. Yeah. Oh yeah, this person says mine sounds. Let's go. So with Joanne says mine sounds great. Thanks, Joanne. <laughs> so I do think that it's kind of interesting. I think this balance between um, creating a video show and then creating a podcast. So I I think that there is an interesting balance that needs to be struck around audio, right? Because if you're going to take the audio out of the video that you're creating and put it out as an audio podcast. There's maybe a little bit of an elevated expectation on audio quality when it comes to that. So if you're thinking about doing a video, um, but you're going to repurpose the audio into a podcast feed, you might need to um, think about the audio production side uh, a little deeper than maybe what you might if you're just doing, let's say, uh, like a short for mm -hmm. YouTube or something like that, where you can actually have that phone really close to you. But it's 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 one of those things that, you know, I know you guys don't typically work with a lot of podcasters per se, but I'm sure that there are times when they want to take that content and make it available as a podcast too, I would think. Yeah, for sure. And that's why I said it depends on what your needs are and it depends on like where you're doing videos and, and all of that stuff. And so, um, yeah, like, and, and also being familiar with your platform. So like when we started this, I didn't realize there was this whole separate settings option where it says on StreamYard where I can reduce my background noise. So I think somebody was probably getting like some very, you know, things like that. So it all just comes down to test, test your equipment, test what you're doing before you go way too deep into it. So if you know, you're going to want to use something for a podcast, don't be doing like hours and hours of footage before you watch it back and listen to the fact that it doesn't sound as good as you think it does or whatever that is like, do, do test, do, you know, trial runs with all of that stuff before you get too deep into it. Yeah. I think, you know, trying to walk that line on the, I mean, I think the, the audience is telling me that your, your mic sounds great. I mean, I do hear a little bit of a, a background echo in the room there, but it's not, uh, it's, yeah, but you're a long ways away from the microphone. So that would explain that to some degree. Um, you know, it's like with this, this mic here, if I bring it up close to me, you, you can hear there's not going to be any kind of. Do you want me to there. talk closer to you? No, here? no, does this, does this, no, no, does this satisfy you? no, no, um, no, no, <laughs> it's not. but it is, you know, it is a good lesson for people that are that are watching this around your audio quality. I mean, obviously, obviously being closer to the microphone will take out a lot of background sound, yeah. right? And echo. So I always and, use for, for ads, right. for example, I'm always using a lav mic. Like that's my go-to for, for yep. ads and stuff like that. I also like to, if you've seen any of my ads, we like to do a lot of fun things too, where it's like 
there's ads where I'm jump roping or like things like that, where it's like, yeah. I've got to have a law for that. Um, so that that's my go to for, you know, when I'm doing that kind of a thing. Yes. Yeah, road, so, uh, so somebody just said they like the road wireless. So that that's what I use. Yeah, I think it's a good one, too. I've got a got lavalier mics. I've got shotgun mics. I played around with all of them. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and what, what I find is that it doesn't really matter what microphone I'm using. If I'm further away from it, uh, it doesn't sound as good. So yeah. it doesn't matter. I mean, it, it does matter how my room is buffered. Um, but if you're creating videos, like you're encouraging people to basically do it anywhere, do it in a place that's appropriate for the kind of content that you're producing, um, then those are those are considerations that you may not have the ability to control. But I do know that there are platforms now, and StreamYard is one of them. They do have a noise reduction technology. I, I, mm -hmm. I think you just mentioned that, and an echo reduction too. So, so those kind of technologies are being integrated into the software increasingly. And I do think that you know, doing it the way we're doing it here of having some distance away from microphones will become the, the norm. So as we create yeah. videos, it's going to be increasingly possible for us to treat them as though we're just talking normally like a person sitting across from us. It's not like we have to have these big boom microphones sitting in front of yeah. us and looking like a podcast. <laughs> and I would also point out that for any of the people that were like, Rob's mic is popping, like you're still watching this. It didn't make you go like, oh my God, I can't stand this. I'm not watching this, which goes back to my original point of you're watching for the content. Like the content is the most important thing. Uh, the other stuff is secondary as long as it's acceptable. If it's terrible, and like I said, if he sounded absolutely awful, a lot of you would have been dropping off already, but he doesn't. He sounds totally fine. Yeah. Um, and so it goes back to the point of the content mm -hmm. is the most important thing um, because all of you here to complain about it are still here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Beauty Bubble uh, makes a comment here. Um, what a cool visit by at TubeBuddy. It's, it's nice to have you here. I guess uh, TubeBuddy is a popular YouTuber, I I presume. So I think it's I think, a software, isn't it? Where you like Is it? Okay. Yeah, I think it's what like with the I'm not I'm not tu familiar with them. I was just assuming that it was, you know, something to do with YouTube, but <laughs> Yeah, I think it's like a plug-in on like different keywords. Oh, it is. Like okay. That, okay, well, I'll, thank I'll you. I'll let them pitch themselves. I, I don't Right, know. <laughs> right. You're not going to do that. Okay. No, I just so I don't just so I don't say it wrong what they do exactly, but Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of these topics are really kind of very contextually relevant to this audience because we're all trying to figure this out and trying to do do the right thing, right? Mm -hmm. And come across the best. It's just like early in this show, the audience called out me for having the background music playing when I accidentally forgot to turn it off, which yeah. I've been called out for that before. So this is my first <laughs> time. So I've, I've learned my lesson um, to some degree, but I didn't, you know, act on it like I should have. So, so, you know, I mean, I make mistakes with the show all the time. So it's just a matter of being real and yeah. authentic on my side too. And I've absolutely, I've been a podcaster for like, like I mentioned earlier, a very long time. And, but most of it was pre-production. Um, but mm -hmm. I did do a certain amount of live radio too. So which is a completely different kind of mental approach to content too. So it's, it's uh, all these, you know, live video, audio on demand podcasting. And what you're talking about is more spontaneous video recordings and production. Uh, and I think it is an important skill for people to really have and develop. I think it will be an important skill as we look to the future. So mm -hmm. all those that chose to be with me tonight and really <laughs> thinking about this topic, I yeah. think is really doing doing the right thing um, mm -hmm. for their, their, their psychology of how they're doing this. So yeah, absolutely. It, yeah. It looks like and I've got uh, somebody asking for my email address. So let me oh. pull that up and you're more than willing to send me. I mean, if you're more than willing to send me an email, I'd be happy to correspond with you. So, and that, that applies to anybody out there. So if you have a question for me or a comment about the show, I will. I'll take your ideas and yeah, you'll be and, close personal friends right. real quick. Um, right. Yeah. And I just want to give everyone else just kind of a, a last opportunity. If there are any questions that we didn't cover that you still had that were burning um, that you wanted us to hit. I think we, we, 
covered a lot of topics today, but if yeah, there's I think any, we did. any other burning uh, questions that you have about being on camera, creating converting videos, any of that, feel free to drop them in the comments. I think there's a little bit of delay, so we'll give you a chance to do that so we can catch them. Yeah, and also I'm I'm going to have a giveaway coming up um, of, of the StreamYard Puddles Duck and a StreamYard <laughs> Doug. So enter hashtag the yard into the comment field and we'll get you entered into the drawing, which I'll, I will pull up on the screen here in the next couple minutes. And I'll give you some time to, to do that. And mm -hmm. so at the bottom of the screen, if you're not, if you're watching the video version of this, uh, just, it gives you instructions right there on how to, how to do that. But, but I did want to mention that Abby's website is crushing it online uh, camera. That's correct. Uh, just crushing it on camera. .com. On camera, right, right. I, yeah. I just said it wrong. Um, <laughs> and and that's that's where to go if you want to connect with uh, her and David um, mm -hmm. about maybe getting some custom help with your your, your presentation abilities on on videos. So so we definitely want to encourage everybody to you know if they're serious about being a content creator online is to you know get educated and and. Practice, practice, practice is kind of my my ideology on this as well, and I think that will help you get better. It may, you know, it depends on your abilities. is always a key here, but, mm -hmm. but I think it's key. Is is there any advice that you know you can share on that side too? On which side? On the kind of practicing and you know having patience with yourself and, <laughs> and those those kind of things along this process because it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like one of the things that comes up a lot in our program is like people can be so hard on themselves in like literally module one. And we're like, hey, if this is a one module, you know, like if we expected you to be perfect in module one, it would be a one module program. So that's why today I really tried to be emphasizing and normalizing the fact that this is a skill that you learn just like anything else. And it's going to be easier for some people or some parts of it might be easier for some people and some parts might be harder for other people and it might be different depending on who you are and just like give yourself some grace that you're learning something brand new um we have a lot of people that come to us like for example that have been successful in their business they, they've been a realtor for 30 40 years and then all of a sudden the world is shifting and they're having to be on camera and their business is suffering because it's not a skill set that they have yet um but they're an expert in what they do and they're not dumb for not having, you know, the skill set of being great on camera yet. It's just a skill set they can learn like anything else. So um, be easy on yourself. Give yourself some, some grace. Um, one thing that my brother always says to me, he, he's, you know, special ops military background. If I, I have a very high uh, threshold of expectations for myself. So sometimes if I'm messing up on something, I I too can get frustrated. Um, and he always says to me, you know, hey, remember this is your FFT, your first effing, I won't swear on this, your first effing time. So the first time you do something, it's just not going to be good. Uh, and that is part of the, the learning process. If you took one golf lesson, you wouldn't expect to be Tiger Woods. Nobody would. That would be insane. So don't expect that your first video is going to be good. Um, right. Really focus on learning the fundamentals, learning how to do it right. And that's going to build confidence. It's normal to not be confident in something that you aren't yeah. good in yet. Um, and that's fine. But when you develop that skill set and that competence, then you will start to build that confidence with it. So yeah. um, just wanted to like really yeah. normalize that for everybody. Yeah, and you don't have to start out. I mean, what's your thought on this too? You don't have to start out being perfect, right? I think um, you never have to be perfect. Right, I, right. I just, perfect on this? Right. No. Like, but that doesn't yeah, I've mean I've made lots of mistakes. Yeah. In this episode, like it right. doesn't, exactly. Like, so perfection is not the goal. I would say let's shift that towards like effective or converting or whatever or, other word you want to use. Right. Or in the process of getting yeah, better. Right. right exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And I did. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. I was going to mention a question from through lane uh, tools, it looks like. Um, also, are, are, are you able to bring up comments from X? Well, I think your your comment here is an example of uh, that uh, that is possible because I <laughs> yes, believe that's is. from X. So, <laughs> so I think you answered your own question here. 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I see there's like a couple random questions too. So there is like, um, I don't know why they want to know what kind of dish soap we use, but um, I love the Myers brand. <laughs> um, yeah, so you have obviously really clean skin, Abby. So, so no, it must dish be that. soap. It's a oh, dish, dish soap. soap. Yeah, so oh, you, you haven't even seen my kitchen. You don't even right, know right, right. if I have a yeah. clean kitchen or not. Um, any That's thoughts a on random my question. Right. glasses or not so the only thing the only sort of quote unquote oh and i see i am losing my natural light i just looked up um so uh any thoughts on wearing glasses so if you are someone who wears glasses and you need to wear glasses wear glasses the downside is lighting for glasses if you are using like external lights is tricky so i would just say you know maybe look up a youtube video or things like on how to light glasses well so you don't have that ring light in your glasses yeah. or a soft box so you just need to look at it up how to do it prop uh properly um yeah and i think that's then, why the, um, oftentimes people re recommend ha having your main light be kind of off to the side um, and higher so a lot higher of times up, yeah. higher ups uh kind of coming down versus directly ahead of you also if you have like a computer monitor in front of you you have to be careful that the brightness isn't up too high because even that will um you know, reflect. So there's a lot of different uh, things like that. And then let's see. Bop, 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 yeah, because I have three three small panel LED lights above me up here. So there's one here, there's one here, and there's one way over there. And th they're pointed in different directions. So one is pointed yeah. kind of at me, and the other two are pointed at my background. But it does yeah. kind of bleed o over with me. So setting up your you're, you know, if you want to do stuff in a studio or whatever, having proper lighting is really important. Yeah. Um, for really have, even, even doing anywhere. Right. Yeah. And I have a studio set up as well. I just like to do this with, I have a big window in front of me. Yeah. And I, he like, you know, it's now it's 530 and, this, and the sun's going down. So I'm getting darker as we go. But if I were shooting as or things like that, you know, you've got your controlled lighting set up and then you're not having to like worry about that, that type of thing. So again, you just got to test that stuff out. Um, and then Pete George experience says, do you do strategy sessions with people in Australia? Absolutely. We work with people all over the world as long as you're able to book a time during, um, U.S. based hours, uh, then absolutely. And I think those are all the questions I saw. Did we miss any? It uh, oh. it looks like uh, Beauty Bubble asked a question. I often consider punctuation to complete thoughts. <laughs> Can you share a couple of ideas on how to do this well? Um, so I think what she's talking about punctuations is emphasis, right? Oh, so how how to like complete a sentence well? Well, just yeah, to to be able to have punctuation in there and have that be reflective to some degree in how you're you're speaking. And I think punctuation in her context maybe is kind of more of an emphasis. Um, mm. So certain kinds of concepts. So like I'm talking about something right now. Um, so I. I can probably have inflection that reflects kind of a punctuation, right? Well, what's important, you know, like if yeah, parentheses around something, right? If if that if, yeah, if that's what you're asking, I mean, sometimes something that we see yeah. sometimes with people when they're nervous is they make everything sound like a question, right? So Just, like right. so, I'm really thinking that if you get this, if you da 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 and everything like up glides at the end of it versus actually landing on a period which has a downward inflection. So I would say if that's something that's happening because you're nervous, be mindful of that. Um, but in terms of how to use emphasis and stuff like that to make a point, that right back to what we were talking about earlier is like you really have to figure out your emotional range or your range of being on camera and being in the same way that singers will work on their scales so that you know how to hit different things at different times um that doesn't mean you're doing it in a contrived way it's just being able to know what your authentic levels are so that you can hit them at certain times but there's not like a if you say this in this exact way everyone's someone's going to give you a million dollars like no it's about what's going to be authentic to you and making sure that that's coming across on camera yeah i agree with you yeah so yeah. let's um let's start moving towards getting the giveaway done yeah uh, let's do it. you wrap it up i guess we're coming up on uh, mm -hmm. like an hour and 23 so we've actually been doing this for a while. 
So uh, let me uh, make sure that we've, we're capturing all of the, so we're up to, it looks like 32 entries in the giveaway. So nice. uh, keep them coming in. Uh, that's uh, just like this, uh, hashtag the yard. And that'll get you entered into the uh, giveaway here. And then so- And you pick the winner right now? Yeah, so it actually is a randomized kind of tool that that we have um, that's available to all all StreamYard uh, landowners to actually um, uh, run a giveaway. Awesome! All right, um, you guys got a few seconds. Hashtag the yard if you want yeah, that so little. Hurry up! <laughs> hurry up! My dog just checked in and said he was hungry for dinner. So you got to hashtag the yard. Let's see. <laughs> right, right. So here's here's the giveaway tool. So it actually racks up the the entries right up here at the top of, or actually right in the, right above that draw button that you see on the screen. And so I will start playing a, a little bit of music here. I'll, I'll, I'll restart that as we build up to do, 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 right, right. Do, do. <laughs> so hurry up and get your entry uh the yard like what's on the hashtag the yard like what's on the screen and get entered into the uh sweepstakes so or it's not a sweepstakes it's just a giveaway so <laughs> um so it looks like we're up to One lucky winner will win right Looks like we're up to 36 entries. Keep them coming in. If you haven't entered into your comment field on your preferred viewing platform, uh, put in hashtag the yard and we'll get you added in here. And uh, if you win, what you will need to do is send me an email to my email address with your address. And we will ship you out the StreamYard merch. Rob's going to show up at your house and hand deliver it. Right, right. Well, Thank you for setting that unrealistic expectation. <laughs> no, it's a, a first-class experience that he does here. Right. Can right, we get exactly. two more entries to 40, and then he can pick this winner? Yeah, let's let's get it up there. So pull, pull up and uh, – or actually find the comment area, and that'll get you in there. And, and then just type in hashtag the yard. And so – but I'm just gonna have to pull the trigger here because yeah. we've given lots of opportunities here. So, um, let's so let's go it. ahead. Let's, let's do it. it. So, be. good luck to everybody out there. So let's pull. Let's hit the draw button. All right. Let's see who comes up. Oh, all right, oh, all right. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Oh, Lewis so Soto, Mary you're the winner. Yeah. Right. Way to go, oh, Lewis. Lewis. Woo. Or Luis, I don't know which. Probably which Luis Soto probably is the right way to pronounce it, but I we're entirely guessing. <laughs> so send me an email to rob.greenly at gmail.com if you're listening to this on the the uh, the audio podcast. Um, so and and if you are listening to this on the audio podcast, uh, come visit a live show um, on Thursday night at seven p.m. Eastern, four percent. 4 p.m. Pacific, and uh, join us here and watch the show. And you too can enter into the giveaway to win some StreamYard uh, merch. So, so it, I've got to entice the audience to come in and watch us live because yeah. I love a live audience. The more people that we can get here, the, For sure. the better. And it's always. Many- yeah, such good questions. Well, thank you all for being here and for asking awesome questions. And you know where to find us if you have anything additional or if you want some more customized help on how to create awesome videos, uh, feel free to hit us up. Yeah. So anything, um, in any way that people can contact you, what's the best method to reach out to you? Is it just on your on your website? Yeah, that- crusheroncamera.com is usually the best way to find us. Um, if you do want to um, email us directly or um, if you want to email, well, actually, I don't want to say it because you might, the team at crusheroncamera.com would be the best way to find us. Okay. Um, we're, of course, like on, uh, you know, we've got our Facebook and Instagram pages and all that fun stuff too. But yeah, crusheroncamera.com, there's a free training actually up there that you can you can watch where we go into more depth about the Hollywood method and those three prong approach that we were talking about. So that's at crushingoncamera.com. Um, and you can find us on the socials. 
Awesome. Awesome, Abby. Thank you so much for being with me and and being so open to random questions. <laughs> yeah, love it. Love it. Yep. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. We'll catch you later. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. And and have a terrific evening. And, and I'll be back with a new show next Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4, 4 p.m. Pacific uh, with another live show and another terrific uh, guest that can cover some terrific tips and ideas on how to make a terrific uh, audio and video podcast or a live stream. So that's the I bet it's going to be terrific. Uh, well, I hope so. I hope so. So, well, right. I got a lot of comments coming that, that have come in since we um, uh, looks like I think they're all comments. just saying congrats and all that stuff. So I think it's great. I think great it's show. Yeah. Thank you, Abby. Hey, um, you're welcome. All and right. So for everybody and and thank you. It said Abby could turn it into a three hour show. So <laughs> but we won't. So <laughs> yeah, because yeah, you have a dog you need to take care yeah, of. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Fonz is yeah. hungry, guys. Yeah, all right. right. Catch exactly. you all later. Have all a good right. Night. Good night, everybody. Good night.